What's up, AFL Fantasy Freak fam? If you're new round here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. If you like AFL Fantasy content, make sure to smash the subscribe button. In this video, guys, I'm going to be talking over round three and what trades you should be looking to do this round. I'll be covering all the hot topics, such as what to do with Wits, Canelio, and Young and which sort of guys you should be looking to target. Enjoy the video, guys. Alright, so I'm just going to jump straight into the biggest issues this week, guys, as I've got a new segment in this video that I want to spend a bit of time on. So stick around till the end to see what that is. But the first big issue this week is Jared Witts. So with Jared Witts, you have a couple options, but the one I like the most is just going straight to Grundy or Gorn. Grundy in particular with his matchup, he comes up against Flynn this week, who Grundy pumped a 135 on last week. But he also comes up against a depleted Essendon lineup and a depleted Gold Coast lineup in his next four. So there's no reason why he couldn't average 130 over the next four weeks. So I think he's a must get now. If you have wits in your R2, you could potentially look at doing a downgrade to get Flynn on the field. I think this move is viable as well, as you can use that cash to then patch up at other areas and... For example, if you've got a Hayden Young, you can upgrade him to a premium that gives you a lot of flexibility in what you can do by doing that move. So I don't necessarily think that that's a bad option also. The option I wouldn't be considering is going wits down if he's your R1 and playing the two rookie rucks on the field. I think Flynn's the only one with the good job security. Hunter we probably won't see for the rest of the season as Marshall looks to come back this week and Paddy Ryder's back training now also. And Meek potentially could get dropped soon as well. Sean Darcy's been playing pretty well. He looks to be getting his match fitness up. And Frio will probably look to give Josh Tracy some games soon. So we could see... Darcy go into the ruck, Tracy goes forward, and they potentially might drop Meek as well. So I wouldn't be looking at playing the two rookie rucks on the field. There's too much risk that comes with that, and it's a great opportunity to just go up to Grundy or Gorn right now. As for the next bloke, Hayden Young. Hayden Young, he's a trade. He's done his hamstring, but... There's lots of options and ways you can look to approach this situation, depending on what your team looks like and where about you sit in terms of other force trades, etc. So, Young, I think the popular move, if you've got wits, will just be to go down to a Parks or a Burgess or a Chapman, for example. Gets you a little bit of cash, and then you can put that cash on top of wits and facilitate a move to Grundy that way. The other option that's viable is going for a more straight swap approach and going to an Isaac Cumming or a CJ, for example. Those are the two main guys in the mid-price category. If I was to go with one of these guys, it would be Cumming as he's got a high percentage of kick-ins and it gives him that baseline of points that CJ doesn't have. So... This option still allows you to get that cash generation happening and you should be able to get some decent scores from these blokes as their rolls look pretty good. The last option that's also viable is just going straight up to a primo. If you're doing this, the guys that I would recommend, obviously Rory Laird, if you don't have him at this stage, he's probably going to be the number one or number two defender this year. I also don't mind Jake Lloyd. His break even still a little bit high, but he looks to be hitting that patch of form again. He's already dropped 80k from his starting price, so if you're doing a defense upgrade, it could be an opportunity to get to him now. And the other two guys I like are Callum Mills and Jordan Ridley. 
So those are my defense options that I'd be looking to target this week if you're looking for a premium option. As for Stephen Canelio, this one sucks. His ownership's pretty low, so there's not that many people in this boat, but the obvious one is just to go straight to another premium. I'd be looking to target guys who are underpriced, such as Adam Trelaw, Andrew Gaff, these premium players who are proven but are down on their starting price. I wouldn't be looking to go up to Clayton Oliver or McRae or Merritt as these guys are pretty fully priced at the moment, so I think you just use this opportunity to get on an underpriced guy. The other option that you could look to do, and this one depends on where the rest of your team sits at, but I also don't mind the look of maybe going a Canelio down to a mid-pricer, so maybe guys like Willem Drew, Isaac Cumming, Tex Walker, if you have that ability with DPP, and then... That may bank you 100 to 200k and you can use that money elsewhere. So for example, if you had a wits as well, you could get him to Grundy that way. If you're in a luxury position this week and you don't have some of these guys that I've mentioned as, as your wits, your youngs, then I would be looking to trade guys like Jordan Clark, Paddy Dow, Jaden Stevenson, Jordan DeGoey, these underperforming guys, they don't have great roles and I'd be looking to dump them this week. Jumping straight into the rookies that I think are the top ones to bring in this week. Number one spot, we have Chris Burgess. Now, this one depends on team selection and where he's named, but I think that if he gets the number one ruck role at Gold Coast, which is a possibility at this stage, then his scoring should be good. He'll be up around the ball. And at 221k, he's definitely an option in defense. His job security will be solid over the next month. If it looks like Gold Coast are going to roll with a Caleb Graham, for example, then I don't like Burgess as much as an option. And I would consider some of these other guys ahead of him. My number two is Heath Chapman. With Hayden Young now injured, it looks like Chapman's pretty safe in the side. You're paying a little bit extra of a premium to get him in, but his job security should be great, and his scoring ability is pretty decent also. So he's one you can have on the field and have on the field with confidence over the next few weeks. Number three spot, we have Devin Robertson. Devin Robertson... His junior numbers are fantastic. His game on the weekend was pretty solid. There's no doubting his ability that he can score, but it's all about job security with these rookies. And in all honesty, I'm not even sure he gets a crack this week. So Brisbane will look to bring Jared Berry back, and I think it will come at his expense. So while he sits at number three on my list, his job security is not great, and he's only here due to his scoring potential. He's one that I would maybe look to avoid this week, even if he is named, as we've seen what Brisbane have done with Pryor and Sharp in recent weeks, and they haven't really been given much opportunity. So Devin Robertson's days could be numbered if he is given another go this week. My fourth option is Luke Parks. Watching Parks last weekend, I was quite happy with his performance. He looks a great role player and Carlton liked the ability that he just goes out there, gives it a crack. And I think that his ability to play his role well will keep him in the side for a, at least a few weeks potentially. So I can see Parks being an option to bring in. He's cheap. His job security should be all right. His scoring, I'm not sure on yet. So I probably would be hesitant to have him on the field but he's definitely a cash cow you should be looking at. Then we have Nick Shipley. Shipley came on as the sub this week um, early due to the plethora of GWS injuries. Shipley is no guarantee to be in the side, but the fact that he was the sub last week and they've just had two big midfield injuries in De Boer and Canelio, it would make sense that GWS give him a crack. If that's the case, I think his scoring should be decent and he's the cheapest out of the lot of this bunch. So 
I think that he's an option to be considered. Then my last option would be Waterman. I don't really like these types of players as options. His job security should be all right, but the fact that he only managed to score 68 when their side won by 75 points is a slight concern. He's going to rely on goals, and Essendon aren't that great of a side, so I would probably be looking elsewhere in terms of finding a rookie in the forward department. As for a couple other guys, Will Martin... Riley Collier-Dawkins and Finlay McRae could all be options that get named this week. So just keep an eye out for team selection. But those are a few names that are floating around that could get games potentially and should have decent scoring ability. As for some other targets to consider, I'll flash up on the screen my top five mid-price guys that I'd be looking at this week, along with my top five premium guys. So... If you guys want to pause the video so you can have a look at that. And we're going to jump straight into the next segment. All right, guys. So here we have it. This is the new segment that I'm going to be incorporating into these types of videos. And that's Twitter time. So this is where I get some of your guys' questions off Twitter and answer them in my trade talk videos. The first one we have is from Brad Donaghy. We have... Would you consider benching Wits and playing Meek and Flynn as rucks as only way to Grundy is to trade Jordan Clark to Parks or Waterman? No coin for Devin Robertson. Doing this would allow me to either patch up rookies or bring in Tex. So my answer to this question, Brad, I don't think that this is the greatest move. As I explained earlier, I think that if you've got Wits at R1, you have to get to Grundy this week. I think Jordan Clark two parks is a fine move in order to get the coin to do this trade, and it's probably what I would be looking to do in your situation. The next question we have is from Skip. Would next week be too early to trade James Jordan? Looking at bringing in Gaff after that quiet start, dropped his price. He looks to be ascending again after this weekend. So Skip, in this circumstance, I like Gaff as an option. I think that what you've said about him is true in terms of him being underpriced as a premium and he's definitely one you should be looking to target. I just don't think James Jordan's the right sort of player you should be looking to trade out this early. His break even's still in the negatives and whilst his time on ground has been relatively low, his scoring ability seems to be quite good and you would expect that he still continues to score 60 plus, which means he's going to generate quite a bit more cash. He looks to be one of the better cash generators, so I'd be looking to hold him for a few more weeks still. Make that money first. I'd be looking at other guys to upgrade before jumping the gun on James Jordan. The next question comes from Matt McDonald. He has wits and he has young. He needs to bring in a rookie price below 200k and he's asking if Parks is a viable option. I touched on this earlier in the video, mate, but I think Parks is a good option. He is under 200k. His job security should be okay. His scoring ability I'm unclear on just at this stage. So I would prefer to have him on the bench, but if you've got have to put him on the field, that's okay for now. I'd just be looking at a move to potentially get him to the bench as soon as possible. I think this is fine if you're using this money to get wits to Grundy. Next, we have Alex Hind asking, my thoughts on Trelaw and his return to normality. So I just had my premium target flash up on the screen a couple minutes ago, and I had Trelaw in my top five. So it looks like Trelaw is getting back to full fitness and last week we saw him play a lot more in the middle. His CBA numbers were back up at 68% and we did see Dunkley drop down to the low 40s. Trelaw has that explosive ability out of the middle and as a result he kicked three goals out of the centre last week. The Bulldogs will use him here and I can see him returning back to his premium type scores. His break even's still pretty high, but he is low in price. He's priced around 
94, which is super cheap for a guy that can push that 110 mark. I would be jumping on Trelaw if I had the ability to this week. I think he's a great option and he's probably one that I'll be looking to heavily target next week. Then we have Jesse asking, coming or Giath to come in for Young? So I've touched on this a little bit earlier, but I think that coming is the better option here. I mean, they're both good options, but if I was picking one, I would go with coming as he's taking a lot of the kick-ins for the Giants. This gives him that baseline of three points that the GF doesn't have. People are concerned that Whitfield's going to come back and take these points from coming. But with the injuries to GWS's midfield, they might look to play a Kelly more inside. And when Whitfield comes back, he might fill a wing role or a role more up the field for the Giants. So I wouldn't let this deter you from bringing coming in. And by the time Whitfield comes back, you might be looking to upgrade coming regardless. So I think he's still the better option over Giath. If you have coming, then Giath obviously is a great pick as well. But in this circumstance, you're asking uh, one or the other. So I'd be going with coming, mate. The last question we have here is from Chris. He's asking Ridley versus Mills. I think this is a super tough call. Uh, they're both going to be great. They're both vying for top six defender status. Ridley, high time on ground. He's taking pretty much all of the kick-ins and he's playing on from pretty much all the kick-ins, which gives him those three points. Whereas Mills is playing that inside midfield role, which is enabling him to get more of the footy. He's pretty much their number one midfielder now. In the past, I would go with the midfield option as they tend to be more consistent over a longer period of time. It's honestly a coin flip in this sort of circumstance, but I'd probably give the edge just to Mills. So there you have it, guys. That's uh, this week's Twitter time segment. If you want to get a shout out, if you want to get your tweet answered, make sure to follow me on Twitter at AFL Fantasy Freak. I'll quickly go over what moves I'm looking to do this week. I have Hayden Young and Wits, so I have my hands tied a bit. I'll be going to Grundy and potentially Burgess. I'll be waiting for the teams. If Burgess is named in the ruck, then I'll likely go with him. If not, then I'll probably pursue Heath Chapman as I have the coin there to be able to do that. There you have it, guys. That's this week's episode of Trade Talk. If you've liked this video, make sure to drop a thumbs up. If you like this sort of content, subscribe to the channel. Any questions, drop those below. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the back field. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to save my peace, I'm so after school special. She brainy.